let's start for this afternoon session. So uh, just a quick reminder of where I stopped this morning. So after some work, uh, we got to the quantum curve satisfied by the non-perturbative wave function, which is uh, this uh, second order linear differential equation. And the coefficients, the coefficients of the differential equation are R, Q tilde on H. So um, this term here is just the logarithmic derivative uh, of the brown scan in X of, of the solutions. And uh, the expression for Q tilde on H, uh, you, I gave them this morning. And what we uh, proved, what we have proved this morning is that they have good properties in the sense that your quantization to so the quantum curve that you have, have the same uh, singularity structure as your initial spectral curve. And in particular, uh, what I did uh, at the end this morning is to show that the coefficients mm. R and Q tilde are rational functions and that they only have poles uh, in P. So uh, at the same position as your initial spectral curve. And H, it's already known because its, it's X dependence is given by the u infinity k and u nu k, and these are rational functions with poles in P and at good orders. So the H, I will not mention too much, it's already done for it. So the last step uh, to have a good quantum curve is to control the order of the poles. Okay, you have poles in P, but you would like the orders of these poles uh, to be lower or equal of those of what you had at the initial spectral curve. Okay, if you have a pole, if you had a pole of order three, then you want your quantum curve to have a pole of order three and not seven, for example. Okay. So can yes. you the new last Okay. Okay. So last step. This was step three is get a control of the order of the poles. Okay. So let's start with uh, coefficient R of X, which is simpler than the coefficient Q tilde. R of X is as I mentioned, the logarithmic um, derivative of the Vronskian in X. So if you have uh, control of the singularity of uh, W of X, then you'll get immediately um, the order of the poles uh, of R of X. And to do this, well, you have to, uh, to study the behavior of W of X at the poles. Okay. And the way you do it, well, is to study. So remember. Uh, the wave function itself, defining the logarithm of psi plus and psi minus. And it's trivial computation to show that the Vronskian in X is simply expressed as so exponential of the sum times h bar times ds plus a dx minus ds minus. So if you want to obtain properties for the Vronskian in X, where you just need to understand S plus and S minus, which go back to uh, the wave function itself, okay? And the wave function, Psi, so, uh, so log 
psi plus psi minus is given by topology provocation. Well, the perturbative wave function is directly given by topological recursion, but the discrete Fourier transform uh, does not modify the order of singularities, so we can just look at it this way too. And since it's given by topological recursion, you can look at, for any pole, look at the order that you get as a pole. And this is, it can be done uh, quite easily, and you get the following. So by looking the definition, you get, so um, let's say, so S plus or minus of X. So at infinity, what you obtain is so minus plus. course a singular part given by spectral times and then some logarithmic terms here so t v y log x and then some uh, regular part here I will not use. Okay. So how do, do you get this? Well, you just, so S, so think about the, the per perturbative wave function. So its logarithm is just uh, a formal series in h bar and the coefficients are given by integrals of omega h n uh, at some point and you can follow the uh, omega h n and see if they are singular at infinity so the first one here the h minus one so all these terms they follow from uh, omega zero one, and it comes with a factor here, h minus one. And this one, so the constant term, is follow from omega zero two. Okay. So it's not directly the same expansion of, uh, as omega zero one and omega zero two because in the definition of s plus and s minus, s minus you integrate uh, these uh, omega, so you have to take care about the integration, but basically uh, it follows straight uh, forwardly from, from this one. Okay, for omega zero two, so this is the um, h bar to the power zero term. So you have integrals of omega zero two with uh, the regu regularization to avoid co coinciding points. And this creates this logarithmic term here because of the regularization at infinity. Okay, and then you have all the terms that I will not use uh, exactly, but it could be computed uh, if necessary, okay? And then when you have, so you have the same, you can have the same thing uh, with at the other poles and let me write it down. So for X goes to uh, on the mu. So what you get is Similar, similar thing. So there is a contribution in H minus one, which is V 
the integral coming from the integral of omega zero one. Okay. So in both cases, you have a logarithmic term because um, omega zero one has a has a simple pole, and when you integrate it, it creates a, log a logarithmic term. Okay, so this is uh, the result here. And then when you have this, you can use it to get similar result for the brown scan in X. And then when you have this, you use it to get control of the R function and you do the same for the Q tilde function, okay? So let's do this. Um, so the Bronskin, which I'm interested now is, so. So omega of X, just insert it here. It looks like to something like this. Yes, times constant symbol. And so this is here, and you can do the same for Vronsken in time. So th this one are important in order to control the Q tilde of X. Same coefficient here. X minus one mm -hmm. e to the power K minus one. And if you have another Von scan for another time, then it gives you just okay so this is uh, the three quantities that ap appeared in the definition of r and q tilde and you can directly from the behavior of s plus and s minus get this okay This is just, you use, for example, at lambda nu, you have this, you insert it here, and you just get the first, the leading order, which is all I need, oh, sorry, plus. So I, I'll just need the leading order, but you could compute uh, the subleading order if, if you want from this. Okay, and at infinity, uh, well, you need uh, to use this formula. So the one for S plus and S minus at infinity and put it back into this expression. And what you get is, so X goes to infinity you can control uh, the Vronskan and do the same for the Vronskan in time. And what you get is the following. So y of x is two minus two infinity. infinity. Okay, yeah, just. Yeah. 
I mean, the first line of Wx is equal to what? Below. Here? Yes. The constant here? No, no, before that. Two. Oh. Two t nu r nu. Okay, so remember that um, that the, quant the spectral curve, so the initial one, so y dx, so it behaves, maybe I should have recalled uh, this. Do I have it? So it looks like so it has some degree with some coefficients. Okay. Dx x minus one then mu. And at infinity it looks like Plus. So this is the formula that uh, Nicola gave this morning. Okay. So to each lambda, uh, the, there is a degree of the here, which, it's, which is given, which is R nu. And what you get here is, ah, sorry, T. Did I put them? Uh, it's a lambda nu. So this is the times associated to this one. I don't know if it was the same convention this morning. T mu on, okay. So it was right. Okay. okay. And the last line is W T T X, right? Last line is here. Uh, no, below, below the board. Here the one. On the left. The, 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 the last one. Sorry. No, 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 no. No, but it's when x goes to lambda k. When you look at the Ronkin W of x, then it's yes. w t u k. And then it's w t infinity k, right? T infinity. The last function. Ah, uh, here it can be. everything but not new <laughs> okay so if it's the same index as this one well you get something which is singular and if you look at what is happening at lambda nu for the Vronskun, which is not the same index not from the when it's just o, o of one so it, it can have infinity okay but it, it also have, if you have uh, one here, you can have a two here, and, and it's just four of one. It's just not the same. Okay, and at infinity, well, you have the same thing. So this is, Vronskian in X is singular, and the other one are singular too, in which, okay, this is fair. So, So here, when you have infinity, you get something. K minus one, x to the k minus two. And if you have so t mu k would be mu not infinity, then you have something which is regular. Um, K minus 
to okay. 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 So this is not I mean it it's computations not too hard quite lengthy because you see for example for the brown scan in x where you have s plus and s minus and you have to compute so s plus plus s minus will get rid of this singular part here because sine will compensate but then you have to expand the exponential with all the rest so it's quite lengthy and you have also to compute this difference here which means taking derivatives insert it back in order to obtain so this kind of behavior okay so not difficult computation but takes quite some time to do it okay and not particularly interesting just computation okay so i'm not going to do it uh, so. okay so now well let's have a look at what we have here. So for example, take the Vronskian in, in X. So W of X is of this form at lambda nu and of this form at infinity. Okay. We know, because I did it this morning, that it's a rational function with only poles at lambda nu and infinity. And this gives you the order of the pole at lambda nu, and this gives you the pole at infinity. So you know how it should look like, and the result is the following. So using asymptotics omega of x at x to infinity at x column nu plus rational function we want the pole in so it's precisely infinity and lambda 1, lambda n. And you just get everything you need to write it down. So it, we just get that the Vronskian should look like, so there is a singularity at lambda nu, and it's of order r nu. This is given by this. And then the order at infinity tells you that, OK, this at infinity, it should behave like x to the r infinity minus 3. You have a denominator which is of order x to minus sum of r nu. And to get uh, something which is of order uh, r infinity minus 3, you need something which is a polynomial up to uh, the order r infinity minus 3 minus this one, the sum of this one. And this is precisely the genus of your spectral curve. Okay, So here you have because this will be done in exercise tomorrow. The genius of the spectral curve, you can compute it in the hyperelliptic case, and it is just r infinity plus the sum of mu equal 1 to n r nu minus 3. Okay, so if you want, the order of the polynomial is given by r infinity minus 3 because 
from here, minus the denominator here, and this is precisely the genus. Okay. So, it's polynomial of degree j, when you can write it down as a product of x minus the roots times some constants. And this is where interesting things start to happen. So this means that omega of x is a constant that is not determined. X minus qi over this product here. So you have j plus one unknown at this time. So the first one, the multiplicative constants w, and then the zeros of your Vonskan that I call qi's. This is the definition. We know how many zeros you get. And the good thing is that it's precisely the genius of the curve. Right. All right. Then, if you know generic form of the Vronskian, you can compute the generic form of R of x, which is the logarithmic derivative of that. Okay, so you have a part coming from this one. Which gives you a simple pole. And then you have this one, so with a minus sign. So this gives you an expression of the coefficient r here. So we are this term here, good poles at lambda nu, and simple poles, so the lowest order that you, you, can, you can imagine. And then you have other poles here at the uh, zeros of the, of the Vronsky of the solution. Okay, so I'll get back to that. It will be expressed in a different way later. Okay, so now you can do the same kind of computation for Q tilde. Okay, so uh, if you want to do it rapidly, this morning I gave you some uh, alternative formula for the QPK using only the Vronskian in X and the Vronskian in the times. Sorry? Not yet. Not yet. What? So far, wh what I just did is this, is you have a polynomial of degree j. Just say that it can be written as a product of, it, of the roots. That's it. Yeah. Maybe you should say what depends on each bar. Ah, well, qi depends on each bar. This depends on each bar. And that's it. OK. Yes, just uh, make the dependence explicit when necessary after that. Okay, and so just finished. So there's also the Q tilde here, which I introduced this morning. It is expressed uh, directly as a combination of the Vronskian in X 
and the function uh, in the times, times the u infinity k and the u nu k, for which we know uh, the order of the pole. So it's just quite a lengthy computation, but you can get uh, the general form starting from that. And what you get is, uh, is a similar decomposition. I'm sorry. So you also have uh, simple poles at the QIs, and then you have a pole at infinity of a certain degree. And you have also poles at the lambda i's with the coefficient here. Okay. Okay. So this you, you can control. So there is. Uh, a simple pole at x equal qi. This follows from the fact that uh, omega, omega of x has a zero there, and in the formula you need one over uh, w of x, so which just makes you uh, a simple pole. And then you have at infinity a pole of order r infinity minus four, and uh, at uh, lambda nu a pole of order r nu plus one. And this, so the coefficient you don't know so far. But at least you get control of the degree here. Right? Okay. And what is interesting is, in particular, the orders of the poles. Tilde Let's say R of X and H of X, but H most trivial are the same. As the initial spec of K. Okay. It does not explode. So it was R nu and R infinity, and you get exactly the same bounds here. Which is a good thing for a quantization procedure, because this is, was really one of the conditions that we wanted on the, the, the quantization, is we need the same pole and with orders similar to what we had at the beginning, not something which is crazy uh, crazy orders and this is what you get um, I have a question um, yes. I, I did not uh, hear uh, why uh, you said like R infinity uh, it, the, the interval for the sum on the second line for the Q tilde is just uh, Y minus 4 is that minus 4 or okay so vi this requires uh, some computation <laughs> using so the formula that I gave this morning, the function of W, W, T, U, K, and U, infinity of X, K, and U, K, right. Okay, so this morning I gave a formula saying that Q of X is some function I mean, I could write that again, but I mean, I, I gave it this morning. It's uh, it's not a very big formula, and then you know the behavior of all these functions at the pole, and it's just again not complicated computation, but requires quite some time to do it to put the sum and everything, and then you just okay look at the order that you get, and this is what you find. Okay, so. It's, uh, I mean, if, if I do it on the whiteboard, it would take me half an hour, and probably with the wrong result at some point. So. <laughs> but, okay. 
Okay. Uh, finally, so you see, we have many coefficients that we do not know. From this analysis, what we get is the order of the different poles here. So we have simple poles, and here we have uh, poles up to some orders, but we don't know the coefficient here, a priori. Okay? At least no, not with w w what I did here. We would need information on the constants here and the subleading terms to get them explicitly. But this is not what I'm going to do now because um, we have to remember that these function Q tilde R H, they are they appear here in the quantum curve. And if you put back this expression in the quantum curve and you evaluate at x equal qi, which is something you can do, uh, you know that the psi function is regular at this point. So you can just look at what's happening and you get some relation um, telling you What we want is the dual variables for the QIs and the integrable system's point of view. And this, I mean, usually you do it by defining. So PI is just the evaluation sure it doesn't. So you take the uh, logarithmic derivative of your psi function and you evaluate it at x equal qi and this you call pi. Okay, so this is the definition. Psi is regular there, so you can differentiate it and apply it to this quantity. And when you put back this expression for r, q tilde, and h that you already know inside this and you evaluate at x equals qi, then you get a relation uh, pi equals something. And this is precisely what I want to use now. So inserting this in the quantum curve. So it gives you that this at x equal q i should be zero. And that tells you that you have p i squared should be equal to so h q i minus h p i. Okay. Plus, so Q tilde of X minus X. Okay. Okay, so it's just notation here. So Q is not regular at X equal QI, don't, so, so you have to remove the simple pole there. This is why I just write it down here. And H is regular, so you can evaluate it directly. And this part is the uh, R of X function here. So when you evaluate it at X equal QI, you have a simple pole here, which I already removed. And then you have QI minus Q, QJ, with J different from I. And then you have this part here, which is the part which is 
OK? And this gives you, if you want, but it depends on what you want to do, a way to express this unknown coefficient in the Q with the P, P and Qs, by this relation, OK? Complicated relation, but you can use them if you want. Depends what you want to do. So, so far, Q and P is just definition. We have something to do with integrable system at some point, but this is just another way to rewrite some of the coefficient that will be more interesting later on. OK, so just um, maybe it's a good time to write down an example. So if I go back to the P2 example, just to see what the quantum curve gives at this stage, in an easy example. So I will use some of the results that Nicolas showed this morning for. So the example was, uh, so our infinity equal four and n equals zero. And then I just remind some results used this morning. So you have this expression. for Q of X, and uh, infinity is not ramified, which means that Y dx should look like this, so polynomial of degree two. This time it's like dx plus Okay, and you have relation between the coefficient of Q of X with the spectral times, except for the last one, which is the Hamiltonian of the system. So I just quickly remind results here because I might need them at some point. So you just square this and only take the regular part. Each infinity one. Okay. Right. And if you look at the u infinity, there is only one because r infinity is equal to four and uh, it's a constant. Okay, just look at the formula, it gives you this, okay? So the genius is one. Just use uh, the formula that I gave you. I will see that if you want or use a Newton polytope if you prefer to get this. And now, so I'll just just apply uh, what I've done here. So the Vronskian, there is no denominator because n is equal to zero, and it's the numerator is a polynomial of degree one. So you only have one zero. So it should be Q one if I want to keep notation, but there is only just drops the one index, which gives you R of X, the logarithmic derivative is just one over X minus Q. And 
take the Q tilde, which is just there. So there is P over X minus Q. And then, so the, this sum is empty because N equal to zero. So you only have this part here. And the sum goes from K equal to zero to zero. So there is only one term here, which is Q tilde infinity zero, right? And H, so you have to use, well, I didn't write down uh, the formula here, but it was given this morning. So it's, it involves the U infinity two here. And uh, finally, what we have is, so just, so that was, so if I, uh, so this is called Q of X. So it was Q of X, so the naive quantization plus some additional term that reduce to something very uh, simple in that case. So there was two formula. And since I don't want to write this all the time, I'll just call it alpha. Right. So remember the H, you have the naive quantization. So you just your initial uh, Q of X here. And then you had some correction. And the correction, it was involving a sum over U infinity Ks times some derivative of log Z minus the correction here. And here is the sum, there is only one term because N is equal to zero and R infinity is equal to four. This is U two, U infinity two. And this is just the time derivative. Sorry, this yes. Maybe. I will not use it, so. <laughs> okay. Okay, so just remind that you could express Q. So this, okay, I have to write it down at some point, so let's do it now. So use the identification which is here the coefficient and put it back directly in the coefficient, all right? So there is two t infinity four, t infinity three, x three plus, x two, X, and you have the last coefficient that you don't know here, and okay, plus well, this coefficient, which is H squared T infinity four alpha. Right. Okay. And because I don't want to write it down every time. This part I will call S4 of X because it will uh, appear later on. <coughs> right. So this is the expression for H and you see you have an unknown coefficient which goes with the H infinity zero coefficient. So I can write down the quantum curve So first, uh, 
I should write down this expression. Remember that we have p squared should be equal to h of q. So here, sum over j different from i is empty because we only have one q. There's nothing here. This is empty too. So you only get this. And this is this h bar q infinity zero, which is this one. Okay, so what's left here is just uh, this. Right, tilde. Right. So this gives you that um, so all my unknown coefficient. Alpha plus plus what? Plus h bar q infinity zero. Uh, should be equal to uh, p two minus s four of q. Okay. So this relation follow from the definition of P. And then if I write down what is H of Q, there is this constant term, this term involving alpha. Well, this one comes from this one. And all you get is that it's equal to P squared minus this part here evaluated at X equal to Q, right? So this is something that is interesting. And the quantum curve, now that we have all the relation. So I, 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 I told you before that introducing P by this, by this definition is a way to re-express some coefficient in terms of P instead of having them unknown, right? like having a alpha here or something. And the good thing is that with only one p, I can get rid of this sum, which is the one precisely appearing in the quantum curve. And in the end, well, you, what you have is the following. So this is just applying the result. So here is your R of X, one over X minus Q, with the good factor of H bar. And then here it's, it should be H of X minus H Q tilde of X. So H is basically S4 of X, which is you have here. And then you also have this term plus this one, and these are precisely the combination which appears here, which is P2 minus S4 of Q. So it's just applying things. Okay, and this is good, because what we have is a differential equation with rational coefficients expressed in terms of well, see what appears in the formula there are q 
P, Q, P, and then it's S4, and S4 is here, and it's only the spectral types. And H bar, of course. Right. So this is a good quantum curve, good property, and you express it relatively to the spectral times plus some additional Q and P that will play uh, the role of double coordinates uh, in the world system. And that's all. Okay. And this is, I mean, the general theory tells you that, okay, we got all the time something of this form. Right. All right. So this f was for the analysis the order of the poles and writing things using double coordinates. And this can be done in the general case. And here is an example in a simple case. Okay. So what's next? Well, we have a quantum curve here. So this is a second order linear differential equation. And the things you want to do next is, as Nicola mentioned this morning, is linearize it, okay? So in a good way. And so far, it's not so good. So we'll have to gauge transform it at some point. So the, you have a, a linear, linear OD of degree two which means that this is equivalent, so, okay. So a two by two differential system. The coefficient is just uh, so just not going to mess up because I moved the h part factor right. So there is h plus h bar q, and here it's r of x. So you have uh, an OD, a linear OD of degree two. You can always rewrite it in a matrix form, which gives you. A, a differential system of order one, but the price to pay is a matrix system, okay? And when you have the quantum curve, the natural way to rewrite it is just to use, so this matrix L hat, which is this companion-like. So this is just exactly the same content. You can see it this way, or you can see it this way. Right. Now, the problem that we have is that the pole structure of the coefficient here or there is not exactly what we want because you have uh, poles at x equal qi's, okay, simple poles. These are apparent singularities of your system. Oh, well, 
apparent singularity means we have uh, so coefficients of the OD are singular but the wave functions are regular. This is what they are called apparent singularity. It's, if you think about it, it's false singularity. You can see it this way. So the wave function is regular at x equal qi, but the coefficient involved in the differential equation have a simple pole there. This is something which we want to avoid. So wh why do we have... Uh, this problem, it's because the choice of basis is not adapted to what we're doing. So this is this is what we have to change. So you see. Well, the problem is, is in the coefficient, for example, takes R of X, okay? In the Pamevé 2 example, you have a pole here at X equal Q, and Q is, is nothing for the initial spectral curve. It's, it, sh it shouldn't be there, okay? So this kind of poles is just, uh, it's apparent singularity. The wave functions are regular, but for some reason, when you write down your matrix, you have poles, always simple, because you cannot have apparent singularities of high orders. And this is because uh, the fundamental reason is that when you write down this system, so the companion system, you implicitly use a basis here, which is to take the first line of psi plus, and the second line is just the derivative here, right? But you could change that. You could say, okay, instead of this matrix, what you call psi hat, I could choose keep psi plus and psi minus because this is the wave function that I want. But here on the second line, I could make a linear combination between first derivative plus some function times psi plus. This is always possible. That would change the matrix here, of course, but it wouldn't change the quantum curve itself. Because the quantum curve is an equation for psi plus and psi minus. It's not impacted if you change the second line here of your matrix by something else. The matrix here will be, the quantum curve will not. And this is precisely the way to choose the gauge in such a way that the matrix, the new matrix that you would get here does not have apparent singularities. In some sense, the uh, SL2 connection here is, is stronger than the quantum curve itself. The quantum curve, it's only something for psi plus and psi minus, but you need to linearize it in a way that the matrix does not have apparent singularities, okay? And so far it's not done because the choice here of the second line is not good enough, okay? So, this can be done in general. So what you do is define matrix, gauge matrix, which is for now P X one zero. And you define a new gauge, which will be so a new psi matrix, which is so a new 
g of x psi hat of x, which means that uh, if you write down in coordinates, mm -hmm. psi of x, well, for some reason, the wave function will be uh, on the second line, and here you get uh, p of x psi plus plus h bar psi plus and, the, and here it's the same with psi minus okay so the gauge transformation is is what well we just change okay we put the wave function on the second line instead of the first but this is inessential and we replace the derivative here that was not adapted by a linear combination of so the derivative itself plus some function divided by w of x okay and for now at this moment p is a unknown rational function and we'll have to choose it in a way that the new matrix has no apparent singularities This can be done in general. Well, if you want to still have a good connection you don't want to uh, create poles outside p so you just well you, this rational function should only have pole uh, in p otherwise you create uh, additional singularities so when you do this gauge transformation you get a new system a new like system for the big matrix psi and this time so the matrix is not the same as here it's change and let me denote it so on the diagonal you get your function p of x which is the one you choose here uh, you get a um, brown skin here and here you get some coefficient m of x that is given by a big formula. So this is standard gauge transformation, which means that the matrix here, I will call L of x, so the last matrix. So you obtain it from this one by con conjugating by j l hat j minus one plus h bar d over dx of j times uh, g minus one okay uh, yes uh, yes all right trace yes which was uh, also something important because you see the companion matrix is not traceless by definition you have your r of x here and th this is not natural because the initial uh, spectral curve was y2 equal q of x there's no uh, coefficient in y so we expect something which should be traceless in the quantization and this can be done this way yeah what do you mean do the same well, if you have a, a third order differential equation, you have your companion matrix, which will be three by three of the form zero, uh, uh, sorry, uh, zero, one, zero, 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 one, and something here again. So this is what you get directly from the differential equation. And then you can try to find a gauge in which the coefficient will not have apparent singularities. 
And the question is, is it possible? Yes. But this is, uh, I mean, this goes beyond to, to what I do here. If, so here it's only two by two. If you want the, to see it, just our last paper, which is uh, D greater than two, it's done. Less explicit probably than this one. So M, well, this is again, so as I said, it's just a computation. No. You start with this, you multiply by J, J minus one, plus um, H bar D over DX of the gauge matrix times itself minus one, and you get whatever you get here, and the M of X is, so a little complicated, so it's one over W. H minus P squared plus H bar Q plus H bar so derivative of P minus P of X derivative of the Vronskian. So here when I write down the prime, it's a derivative relatively to X. Okay. So this is uh, gauge transformation computation. There's nothing difficult in this. So you see in this new gauge, the lax matrix looks better in the sense that it's traceless, but the coefficient here is more complicated and you can, at the moment, P is not determined. You can choose whatever you want. So you have, you have to be careful here. And the way you choose it, when well you choose it, because you want some condition on, on your new matrix, and the first condition that you want is that there is no apparent singularities. And this is not obvious because, so this you can choose, this is regular at x equal qi, it vanishes, but m, there is a one over w of x and this, as a pole. So you need this to cancel when x equals q, and you have to be careful because there is a, another pole here. So you, technically, you have a pole of order two at x equals q, and you need to remove all of it. And this can be done by a simple condition. So m of x is regular at x equals qi if and only if, well, you just write the expansion around x equal qi. So you have a double uh, pole here and then a simple pole and you need to remove uh, this and this can be done if you choose your unknown function p such that p of qi is equal pi for all i. Okay, so this is a condition that we'll want or P, but P is unknown. So this kind of condition does not fix P completely. So, so how do, do you fix it? So we know that it should be a rational function. Or if poles in P and you don't want the order of the poles to be greater than uh, R nu on uh, R infinity because otherwise it's not very interesting and you want this condition Okay, so this is still too big. And now you have a choice. This, this does not determine P uniquely. And for, for our purpose, this would be enough. Any P which falls into this category give you a lax matrix. 
here with pause only in P and with good orders here and no apparent singularities. <coughs> but the way you want to fix it is conventional. So to get rid of this degree of freedom, you have convention in this. So that the leading order of your lax matrix here should be uh, of the simplest form possible, which is diagonal with opposite uh, eigenvalues. So you want it to be of order R infinity minus two. with so you want it to be diagonal and it's of course traceless because of the formula here otherwise uh, you could have it of any form, just it, it, it's very easy to see. If, if you take, if you start with a matrix, lax matrix of this form, and you conjugate by a constant matrix, then you could turn this matrix into anything. It keeps the eigenvalues, but the rest is not determined. So this is the way you, you, you fix it. Okay, so this is a convention, is just to say, okay, at infinity, which is always a pole in, uh, in our setting, I want the leading order of my lax matrix to be in the reduced form. It, because it's uh, traceless, it has to be this way. So to diagonalize form. And this can be done explicitly by choosing P So you see, this works. I mean, this, this form, you can only get it if infinity is not ramified. If it's a ramification point, then you would never get something diagonal. You would, the natural form would be 0, 0, 0, and 1 here, which is what is done for the Eric curve, for example. OK, so this is done. by taking so P you don't have much choice to fix the two first coefficients.
two rows. And there is a formula to obtain this conventional gauge for the leading order is to choose P of this form. So it's so the denominator is just the product of the x minus uh, lambda nu uh, to the power f to the nu. So this, I mean, that doesn't look odd, at least reasonable to think about it. And the numerator is a polynomial of degree j plus 1. And in order to get this gauge, you need to fix the first two coefficients so that you have the leading order, which is diagonal. And the rest are unknown coefficients that you fix by interpolation for with this condition so that you don't have apparent singularities in your matrix M, in your coefficient M. Okay, so this is where interpolation enters. You don't have, I mean, you could write a Lagrange polynomial for, for this, but it's not, not interesting. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the panel V, to the uh, example. C. Okay, so remember. So in this case, the matrix just erased, but anyway. So is remember it's P. Just give it back. Okay, and in this case, what you get is. So what is P of X? W is just omega, so coefficient times x minus q and p. I'll just take formula here. So denominator, nothing, because n is equal to 0. And you just get these things. So t infinity 4 x2 plus uh, t infinity 3 h bar over 2x and then you have uh, one coefficient alpha it should be alpha 0 and alpha 0 satisfies p of q is equal to p so it just gives you t infinity for q squared the alpha zero is P minus right. and now you can compute M So you see, even in, a, in, a, in, a, in the simplest example, you don't want to compute this. But we are lucky because we have computers, so they can do it for us. So what, what the formula is here, you have P, you have W, everything is good. And in the end, just, okay, just so that you see what's going on. So there is a, the factor W here is in factor of everything. And then you get a polynomial of degree one. Let's say gamma x plus delta. And the coefficient, you could write them if you want. So the first one is not so bad. And the second one is 
quite bad. So, two to infinity four squared Q. Okay. So it's a polynomial of degree three in Q with some coefficient. Well, it's not that bad. Final term. So of course it's there are some kind of homogeneity condition. You see the spectral times they always appear in products that with a fixed order and plus h bar t four. Yes. So I said all of this. Ah, sorry. Okay. So, just maybe look, look at it in a matrix form, because I want to mention something. Okay. So in this case, so the Lax matrix looks like Everything, but I'm sorry. Ah. So. not rewrite again because it's just on the left. And here you have minus this coefficient because it's traceless. Okay. And this, remember, is a polynomial of degree one in X. As you can see it here. Okay. So this, you can check that the leading order at infinity, so see, this is a polynomial of degree one, this one two, so the only contribution is at order two is this one, and it's diagonal, traceless as expected, okay? So this Lax matrix, for those who know, is, I mean, it can be mapped to, um, the panel V2 lax matrix in the uh, Jimbo Miwa gauge. It's not exactly the same because uh, I think in Jimbo Miwa, this one goes there and M goes there, and there are some corrections here. But basically, the order of the polynomials are good. <laughs> then coefficients are not exactly expressed in the same way, but it's uh, the Jimbo Miwa uh, system. So this is a, I mean, an important example in the sense that the way we quantize just at least in this example gave us the standard Jimbo Miwa Lax method, which is quite uh, interesting. And if, I mean, in exercise, we'll do uh, the panel V1 case and works too. Okay. Next. Okay, wait. This can wait. So you see the 
is a lax matrix is to me mo more important than the quantum curve itself. The quantum curve is a scalar version of the matrix, which means that for the first entry, you'll get the quantum curve. But it's better in a sense that if you, here you, you choose the, ga the gauge so that you do not have apparent singularities. And this is a little stronger uh, than just the quantum curve itself. And it can be done in general. Question? So for me, this reminds, in fact, the original Riemann-Hilbert problem in a sense. So in the original formulation, you know, the question was whether I give you some monodromy data and then you can produce a differential equation. Yeah. And when I say differential equation, I mean scalar differential okay. equation. And then it was actually realized that that was harder than finding a system because of certain constraints and so on and so forth. But what I wanted to say is that this is uh, in fact very similar to how you define the canonical coordinates in the, in the Hamiltonian theory of the Panerai mm -hmm. equations, yes. right? So the P's and the Q's are conjugated variables. You have L of X, and so yeah. what you're doing is to look at the spectral curve, which is mu square equal to the determinant of L of X, mm -hmm. and then you are quantizing it by associating a differential operator to that. Yes. Am I right? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, so this is very, um, yeah, so I think for the panel equations, not with topological recursion, of course, but this was kind of known by the Japanese school mm -hmm. in the way they defined the Hamiltonian theory yeah. of pan sure. equations. And then maybe another comment which, which I would be really interested to discuss, but maybe later, is that Dubrovin and myself did this for any uh, rank of Fuchsian system. Yes. But yeah, that's, uh, I, I have no idea how to think about that in, in this context. Well, function systems should enter this. It's just, I mean, it's just uh, simple singularities. Uh, sure, but then I have lots of P's and lots of Q's. Yes, true. And well, in the example, I only have one, but in the general theory, we have G. So mm -hmm. we can you know, have two, three, whatever. Just a comment. Um, the P and the Qs here, actually, we introduce them in this way because we follow the Arnad uh, spectral Darbo coordinates. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's basically what yes, we use here. Yes, but it goes for two by two, spectral coordinates, and uh, so to speak, differential coordinates, they coincide, but as soon as you have higher ones, then you have different. Yes, th this is yeah. a piece that so far we do not have. Oh, and we, we Yeah, we can discuss yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Open problems, on this one. <laughs> Yeah. So, uh, what can we do next? It's always next. So now we have constructed maybe I should just mention page bar dependence and this one also depends on H bar. So we have a, a lax matrix and a lax system like this. And um, so the lax matrix has no apparent singularities, exactly the same pole structure as the initial uh, classical spectral curve. So well, basically, this is done for this system. I don't see anything interesting that we could do. But the next question is, is OK, but we also have variational formulas connecting the time differential uh, to, uh, of the uh, omega hn. And we could write system a similar system. But it's instead of taking x derivative, We could be interesting also in the derivative of psi relatively to uh, times. So if you do this, 
uh, well, you, you have a problem is that the, the, the times, the spectral time that we use, no, they do not have good properties for this differential, at least uh, not easy one. So it's better to, to shift them to what is known as, as isomonodromic times. And the way you can do it is try to find lax pairs in the sense that what well, you would like to keep this and you would like to be compatible with of the time system for some times. Which are not necessarily the same as uh, the, the capital T's, but And of course, what you want is that the matrices A T U K of X are rational with P with lowers. Okay. So is it possible to do it? This is interesting for people in um, in integrable system because having compatible system of this form is not natural. I mean, it requires uh, compatibility con compatibility condition that usually uh, are not met. But when your system is integrable in some sense, it precisely sa satisfies such systems. And the question is, okay, this, we build it, so it's done. The question is, can we find times T in UK for which we could have this kind of relation? And this time we do not have a uh, choice on the Psi function. The Psi function is fixed. It's the one constructed by TR and taken in the right gauge. So this, I mean, we, there's no, no choice here. And the question now is, well, what we only can find is these times. Do they exist? And do we have formula to have them? And what is the shape of the corresponding matrix? Okay, and this can be done. And you'll see that you do not get the spectral times every time. How to find the new case and can we have formulas for matrices? So you have two options here. Depending on what, what you want to do. So the first option is, okay, assume that it exists. And take right shape for a t uk of x and put it 
in the compatibility condition. So the, when you have two, two systems of this form, they are compatible if and only if I just take the time derivative here and the x derivative here and say that this should be equal. And that gives you the compatibility condition. So the compatibility condition is h bar b of l dt ok minus h bar a t ok gx plus the commutator is equal to zero. OK, so this is the compatibility, general compatibility condition. And if you took the right shape for your matrix, so that is something you guess, you try, then you can satisfy the compatibility condition, which is uh, if you don't have the, if, if you choose orders too low, that will fail. If you take order too big, you will have uh, some undetermined uh, coefficient, so you have just to, to do it, well, take a big form, and then if you have unknown coefficient, just take them to zero, and that's it. Uh, it's also a possible way to do it. And then you satisfy your compatibility condition, and that gives you everything. In particular, that will give you the dependence of the spectral times in terms of this unknown time, so you get them uh, afterwards. This is possible. If your lax matrix is not too complicated, as for the example, you can easily guess the right shape for A and do it this way. I'm going to do it in the example afterward, but okay. Secondly, what you can do is define so option two. So uh, L T infinity K define these matrices. So you take the polynomial part of some, uh, so the L matrix times some powers of X or times some power of X minus lambda mu. This defines you some matrices here. And you can hope that these will be matrices appearing here. But this does not always work if the system satisfies so d over a t k oh, I just did not mention how so this is only the explicit I forgot the derivative then the result is Oh, sorry. Okay, whoops. And I forgot to define the uh, small t's here. So you, they're not defined directly in terms of the spectral times, but the vector field is, so you have to satisfy
you and same for infinity there is something to satisfy f minus one q minus one t to infinity okay so in this second approach the time that you look for should satisfy this this relation and this gives you a one-to-one -one map between the spectral times and the new times it's not directly explicit but this fixes uh, the relation between them and when you have defined these times and re-express the lax matrix in terms of these times then you can define these matrices and if this condition is met then a good matrix A will be precisely this this is easy to compute okay so it's you still need to verify something at some point so in this sense well, it's also an option defining these matrices defining these times and so when you have only one or two, it's pretty easy to make the connection. And then check that this works. And this, if this works, then automatically you get, you get the answer. OK. And this creates, it's a way to create automatically lax pairs compatible with uh, the lax matrix, the lax matrix that we, we, we constructed from TR. Okay, so just to finish, let's try this on the example because this is a little general, not necessarily easy to follow. So what happens in the example? Okay, so just uh, to remember, so the lax matrix, I'm going to write it rapidly again. Let's begin with x here. polynomial degree one okay so let's try the second approach and compute well n equals zero so it's nothing here it's only one one matrix which is lt infinity one so you have to take the polynomial part of x minus one, x minus one L. What is it? Well, if you multiply by x minus one, just lower the degree by, by one, so only uh, these two terms will survive, and you get t infinity point x plus t infinity point x. Here there's only w, and in the m m of x polynomial of degree one if you divide by x and take the polynomial part only the term proportional to x survives and this is fine because it was a not too bad one so we can write it down completely here okay So this is what you expect to get as a good candidate for a matrix here. And this can be done. So, uh, 
So if you write down this condition, they give you that there is only uh, one time, which is t infinity 2 should be equal to uh, so what? t infinity 1, t infinity 4. So only this condition for k equal 2 has to be uh, verified, and l equals 1. And if you write it down, so there's only t infinity 4 appearing here, and you just get just a, a relation here. So this means that the isomonodromic time you expect is proportional to t infinity 2, this factor here. Right? And of course, you have to check this condition, but this works fine in the end. So this was for option two, but requires to know uh, quite a lot. If you take option one, it's also possible to do it. At least in this example, it's not too hard to guess the right shape of the matrix, and it's probably uh, better for understanding. So you look for the matrix. So which shape sh should we take? Well, if you look at uh, the uh, Lax matrix, it was a polynomial uh, everywhere. So we're looking for polynomial, and then we'll just choose uh, some kind of, of formula of the same uh, form here. And then we'll just look for so A1, X. B1, 1. Uh, sorry, should be degree 2. Well, basically, the same form. So you start with this, a matrix, so degree one on the diagonal and constant of the diagonal. And then you put it inside the compatibility condition and this will fix any coefficient. Every coefficient will be fixed. So you will find the coefficient here on the diagonal equal to t infinity four and t infinity three. And then the rest will follow. So the, both options, in the end, give you uh, give you the the same thing. One important aspect is that um, so compatibility condition condition. So they, they give you the, the coefficient. Let's say you have this. But now if you write down the compatibility condition uh, for these two systems, what you obtain is also dq over dt infinity 1 and dp dt infinity 1. You write down the compatibility condition, this will appear because well, you have to take the derivative of L relatively to the time here, and Q and P appears in this matrix, so at some point you will get these quantities. So in this example, so we'll do uh, the pan levé one tomorrow in exercise with complete uh, details. What you get is, uh, so this one is just minus 2P, and this one is minus t infinity so of course the quantity that we have seen before except maybe from the sign 
minus 2 uh, and here if I want to be very specific Sorry. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. So this is what you get, and I replaced everywhere capital T infinity two by the relation here at the time, and this gives you an Hamiltonian system, and it's always the case, but I will not have time to do it. So here, oh, sorry, it's H bar. So, so generically, this is always the case. So this is how you construct the Hamiltonian in a sense that. And here you can compute explicitly the Hamiltonian, so it depends on P, Q, T infinity one. And well, it's not hard to see. So it's P square. So you get this part here, and the other one is just, so you have to integrate this, and this gives you uh, plus so t infinity 4 square q4 minus 2 t. So integrate this one, q3. Oh, sorry. So you can explicitly get the Hamiltonian here. Well, it's, here it's fairly simple because this relation is easy. So it just gives you a P2 and then the Q part is just, okay, take the antiderivative of this thing relatively to Q and you get it. And in the general theory, uh, well, this is always possible, okay? And if you have more than genus one, then you get more Hamiltonian. Right. And so w the reason why I call it uh, the Pan Levé 2 uh, system is that well, when you have the Hamiltonian now, it's pretty easy, is that Q satisfies so Pan Levé 2 equation. It's not directly in the right uh, reduced form, but uh, you could risk it to obtain it. So uh, just uh, well, just take it here, h bar square. Is equal to. Uh, why is equal to this?
this you can rescale all coefficient to put it in the uh, usual form of the Pan two equation. Okay, so this is why uh, we call we called it the Pan two uh, example because in the end the evolution for the Q coordinates is directly connected to a Pan two solution. Okay. I just want to know how much has been known and how much it's still open. Uh, so the nice clean formula of quantum curves you wrote down, are they known only for the wave function such that the integral is from sigma of z to z, or you can chain the divisor, and still formula of quantum curve is known? Okay, so I in the hyper elliptic case, uh, it is natural to choose uh, sigma z to z, because the uh, involution is well defined globally. If you go to higher dimension, you, you, can't take, you cannot take that. I mean, this would be uh, not very natural. So you need to take another uh, integration path. And usually what you, what you need to do is take, so at the bottom, is take uh, one of the poles, usually infinity, although it's pre, it's pre image. Otherwise, if you don't do this, if you take any point, you can get some kind of quantum curve, but the degree of the quantum curve will not be d. It would be generically d square or something between. And this is not what, what you want. I mean, if you have y cubed, you need uh, something of order three in the end and not nine. So that could be possible difficulty if you want to go higher rank, like well, what Marta said? Th this has been done. I mean, the last paper is... Uh, yeah, so, so what would... In, in the paper about the hyperleptic case with Olivier, we did it with his divisor, but in the paper, Bertrand and yeah. Elba did it by integrating from a pole of YDX. And in our latest paper in the general case, we did it integrating from a pole. So in the, in the completely general case. Yeah, for the IRL. But yeah, so for example, what we could do for the higher rank would be to take an integral from two points in the fiber above the same point downstairs, but this we didn't do. I mean, it's still open, we are sure it works, but it needs to be done. Uh, so you said that um, you write this differential equation and then of course by rescaling you can uh -huh. get rid of all these t's apart from yes. one of course and <laughs> otherwise you wouldn't have fun well, but okay uh, you can so get rid of this term yeah, yeah 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 i mean i i can imagine how you can go there uh, i just was wondering whether these t uh, in fact you can still see them in the theory of the pan equations because as you probably know the pine level two is a self-similarity reduction of mkdv and the the change of variable that you describe between the capital t's and the small t's is very similar to that self-similarity so i wonder if those capital t's are actually some uh how to say ghosts <laughs> coming from mkdv the, my answer is I don't know. Okay. And the problem with the, the, the Panovay 2 uh, equation is it's too simple. The connection between the capital T's and the, the small t is, is, I mean, it's trivial up to a factor. So, I mean, for the conjecture, for the question, it doesn't really help. It's, it's too easy. So, and for, for higher uh, problems, on it, honestly, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, we, we introduce um, the change of coordinate. It is quite natural from the, the quantum curve itself because uh, you see in Nicolas' lecture, you, you had a, the, the PD part mm -hmm. and that I transform into a, an ODE. And this, when the change is precisely made so that this PD part can be written simply in, in terms of the new T's. So maybe, uh, I mean, the, the natural start would be there. Is there a question? So I have a question. 
um, with the compatibility condition, maybe, can you get an expression of Q in terms of what we compute from the recursion? Small Q? What do you mean from what we compute? Um, so we've got the wave function, the partition yes. function. Yes. Can we express Q in terms of the partition function? Yes, 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 yes. Isn't it the second derivative of the log of the yes. function? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It should be, it should be yes. I, I think in Panovay 2 case. It's in the Panovay 2 case, it's, it's working. In the general so case. In the open problem, is how gen in general it would be. I mean, if we've got a bunch of QIs, can we express them in terms of log of C? Is it related to either monodomic system? So I think it's just a starter. And people like you can help a lot. <laughs> Any other question? Okay, if there, if there is no other question, let's thank Olivia again.